If you have your Bibles, open them to Matthew 6. Um, last week we looked uh, at the beginning part of that chapter in which it talked about um, uh, doing your spirituality in a performance kind of mode and, uh, and the that actually what God wants from us is something far different. So um, I want to look at that again in a little different way. And actually, you know, the songs that we sang today uh, just flow along with the, uh, the message in the sermon today. So if you've got the songs and, they're, and you know, you kind of got it all figured out, then it's okay to go get some donuts and stuff because uh, it'll be very much uh, in line. So uh, beginning verse five, when you pray, don't be like the hypocrites. They love to pray standing in the synagogues and on the street corners to be seen by people. I tell you the truth, they've received their reward in full, but when you pray, go into your room, close the door, and pray to your Father who is unseen. Then your Father, who sees what's done in secret, will reward you. And when you pray, don't keep on babbling like pagans. For they think they'll be heard because of their many words. Don't be like them. Your father knows what you need before you ask. This then is how you should pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come. Your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our debts. And we also have forgiven our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from the evil one. So Lord, teach us. Teach us how we might... Uh, be in a constant communication with you. And uh, hear our prayer and teach us how to pray and all those things in Jesus' name. Amen. Um, years and years and years ago, before most of you were born, there was a book called um, Seven Habits of Highly Effective People. <clears throat> well, some of you were born. It was probably you got it as a nursery gift. And so, uh, anyway, <laughs> way back. And, and I always thought to myself, you know, I am such a non-effective person. Maybe I need this, but this is going to really help me. And so, you know, I got the book, and I think I made it to the first chapter, and I didn't finish it. But that's just me, you know. I didn't, but I was committed at first. Anyway, and I th <laughs> but I thought about that title and the idea that um, their uh, habits are not just a negative thing. You know, we've got to, we've got to, you know, give up that bad habit. You know. Um, Jimmy Buffett sings about there's a bank of bad, bad habits that we store things up in. Uh, we, we don't have to do that. It also is habits are things that we intentionally choose to do and to uh, things that we implement in our life for our good. And um, prayer is one of these things that um, is probably, let's think about it, it's probably the most uh, misunderstood of all spiritual disciplines, and it probably throughout the life of the church have, has been the worst acted on spiritual discipline. We just do it badly, pretty much, over hundreds of years. And so uh, I want us to look at this because um, uh, there's something about prayer that, that sometimes it gets off base. And um, I was talking with a, a psychologist this week um, and uh, actually we were talking about habits and uh, breaking some bad ones and starting some new ones and, uh, uh, with our family and um, he said, you know, it's interesting but um, we're coming to realize that uh, humans are the only animals that can realize that you have to leave one goal in order to go towards another one. I, never, I didn't know that. that. That you have to actually let go of something to take hold of another. And he said that, that that's, that's something that makes us unique. And that, that we, uh, we understand it. it would, we may not do it. It may be difficult for us to do. It, it may take a lot of help and support and all those kind of things. But we can actually let go of something in order to go towards something else and do it consciously. And I thought about that, and I thought, you know, maybe that's a little bit about what Jesus is calling us to here when he starts out by saying, don't do this. Don't do this. Just quit that. Now, do this. He's actually uh, pretty good psychology in that. 
and, and saying you've got to turn away from something in order to do that. Now, now for me, I, you know, I've been a pastor, you know, <laughs> since before there were pastors. And, um, and prayer, I have not uh, gotten well for a long time because um, if you're caught up in, the, in what people want you to be like as a pastor in your prayer, then you pretty soon you start to uh, pray in ways that people want you to. And so uh, when we're in certain settings, you know, it's easy to drop into the, uh, you know, uh, you get a prayer voice, you know. I'm so grateful for Susie and all of you because you're so normal. But, you know, sometimes there's a tendency to drop into a prayer voice where you have a little more authority as you talk to the Lord. You know? And God's going, I don't recognize John anymore. And, uh, and then, uh, and sometimes you use more spiritual words and, you, and pretty soon it just kind of grows and um, takes on a life of its own that's not healthy. And I've got to consciously turn away from that and turn towards what Jesus is calling us to here in, in Matthew 6. Now, he says, first of all, you know, we talked about this last week. Don't, don't babble much. That's the, that's the literal translation of that. Don't babble much. Don't use too many words. Uh, don't be like the pagans, you know. Just try and, you know, catch the rhythm and get God's attention. And say, that's not what we do. And, and we need to understand that we don't have to do things publicly and for show, but you go into a quiet place, like Sheila was sharing with us earlier today. Go into a quiet place. The Lord's already there to meet us. And, uh, uh, and I thought about that. I thought, go into the quiet place. And part of that is that um, uh, one of the things that, that happens in our life is that our secrets tend to grow and control us. You know, we know that. The things that we've hidden away and we don't want anybody to know about, they just seem to well up uh, like Poe's telltale heart, you know. It's just pretty soon it just takes over our, our whole consciousness and our mind, the things that we're trying to keep hidden. Where Jesus says, you know, confess your sins one to another, you just tell them, tell people. And, and then when you do that, you know what happens when your secrets are out? It, they lose their power over us. They lose their grip on us when, as soon as it's out. And, um, and so Jesus says, you know, okay, if you're, gonna, if you're going to do something good like pray, do that quiet. Make that your secret. Make that your secret. And then that communication with the Lord and, and that communion with God is going to grow and dominate and take over every aspect of your life. If you keep it a secret, if you talk about it, it'll lose its power over you. <laughs> it'll, it'll dissipate. And so he says, you know, confess your sins, let them go away, and hide your prayer. Isn't that counterintuitive that he tells us to do that? And, uh, and sometimes, you know, that we put pressure on people to pray like, um, uh, I don't know how many of you, you know, we just, oh, let's just all pray out loud right now, you know, and some of you will get a tight stomach and um, I, I think I told you, I don't remember, but um, uh, when I was first a young pastor uh, down in Solana Beach, California, just north of San Diego, we started this uh, group for young couples, and uh, it was growing, it was meeting in our house, and, uh, and I didn't think of anything in particular, but um, one, one night we were finishing the meeting, and I said, okay, you know, we need to close in prayer. Dave, would you just pray for us? And um, he goes, No! <laughs> Just like that. No. He, he's a, a PhD oceanographer from Scripps Institute. Brilliant. Uh, had become a Christian about a year before and was there with his wife. And, and, and he just went, no. I didn't know what, to, nobody says that to the pastor. In their house, in their own home. You know, like, fake it. You know, pretend. Say, let's do the Lord's Prayer. Now I lay me down to sleep. Uh, or something, you know, anyway. But um, he just went no and sat there. So I went, oh, okay, well, okay, well, we will not do it then, you know. And, and, and everybody's leaving. And as he comes up to me, he goes, you know, I didn't mean to scare you or startle you. I, I don't know how to pray out loud. I don't know how to do that. And I thought, what's wrong with you? You're like the smartest person in the room. How do you not know that? I don't know. Um, 
And then it got me thinking. Um, he had his relationship with the Lord and they talked and that was fine. <laughs> he didn't know how to do this public thing like it's something different. And, um, and so that, that got me thinking that we really do need to learn how to pray and, and how to pray in a natural way. Could, could you imagine if... Um, think of, for those of you who are married or, or you've been in a relationship at some time with someone that you, that you love, um, could you imagine talking to them the way, or them talking to you the way some of us pray out loud? <laughs> Where you know you change your voice and you start using bigger words and stuff and you start talking. Could you imagine sitting there talking to them over a coffee? <clears throat> oh, thou light of my life. <laughs> Thou who knows so much of me, <laughs> I beseech thee. No, you're not going cigar smoking with your friends. You know, <laughs> I beseech thee. You know. I, can you imagine us talking that way with somebody that we love or that loves us, and, and they start talking to us that way? We go, this is nuts. Quit it. That's what Jesus said. Quit it. Stop that. Talk to the Lord. Just come to me. Just share. Ask me what you want. You don't have to have a secret formula for this. You don't have to have a special voice or big word. Just let's commune together. And then he says, this is how you should pray. And it gives us what's become known as the Lord's Prayer, right? We, we do that most weeks here. Um, so I, I just looked at it briefly. And uh, the first one, you know, our Father who art in heaven. What is that? It's, a, it's just acknowledging that there's a relationship, a personal relationship. Um, it's just saying, you know, Lord, we're in this relationship together. You know me. You made me. You love me. Here we go. And then uh, your kingdom come on earth as it, as it is in heaven. Your, your rule that, that basically it's opening up our whole world. And saying, Lord, Lord, bring your presence and your rule to, to all of life. Now, I'm guilty sometimes of compartmentalizing, and I've got my church life, and then I've got my other life, and I've got my spiritual life, and I've got my... Uh, social life and you know all that kind of stuff and that's so wrong because this prayer when we say uh, thy kingdom come on earth as it is in heaven we want God's presence in all of our life we need we talk about this we need to get God off the religion page of the newspaper get him out of that section you know he needs to be in sports and in theater and in uh, uh, social events and in the news right that's where your kingdom come on earth as it is in heaven. It's everywhere. You know, be, be present in all of my life and not just in, in the little parts that I want to relegate you to periodically. Um, and then uh, give us this day our daily bread. Um, take care of us today. Now, I, I'm, I'm a worrier about tomorrow. You know, I, I confess that. <laughs> it's losing its grip on me because I'm confessing it to you right now. You know, uh, it's not give us a, a stockpile so we don't have to come to you uh, for a while. You know, take care of us so we never have to worry about anything so we don't need anything from you and then we don't have to walk by faith. That's what we usually ask for. But give us today what we need. You know, I had a strange experience this week and... Uh, it's probably my own fault. You know, last week we uh, uh, had our congregational meeting and, uh, and we saw the, the budget for the year and, and some of you were kind of struck that we, we ended the year with like 29000 in the hole, you know. And, um, and I've been stressing about it myself and had some email conversations, you know, with, with one of you about, you know, well, maybe it's time the old guy steps aside and lets somebody else do this, you know, uh, and some more vision and stuff. And, and, and I'm thinking all these things, and um, Saturday, yesterday, I'm in here brooding, and because um, we've got the end of the month, and I've got to write checks, you know, 
and pay these bills and stuff. And there's, I'm trying to figure out which ones will bounce. You know, how do you, which ones can you pay? Which ones can you put a little note on saying, don't cash this for a while, you know? And uh, I'm doing all this and I decide, you know, why don't I go on the internet and go to the key bank and see what our account is. Then I can see exactly how much we're gonna bounce. And uh, maybe I post date a few of them or something. Uh, and, uh, and so I got on the account Something's wrong here. So I called Eileen and I said, Eileen, um, I'm looking at the account. Somebody put uh, $15,000 in over uh, earlier this week in, into the account. Wow. Cool. Hmm. And then I had to call her back because I was looking at it and looking at it and I realized I was wrong. The next day, they'd also put another fifteen thousand in, thirty thousand dollars, which is the whole deficit for last year, uh, deposited in the in the bank. And I sat there at the desk and started crying. It was like it was like God was saying, "You've been brooding about this all week. You've been pray You're asking me to do something. Asking, see, what do we do?" And da 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 da. da. I already took care of it earlier in the week. And you're just going on. I go, Lord, you got to do something. What are we going to do? How do we manage this? How do we make it work? I took care of that. See, isn't that what Jesus says here? Don't be like them for your father knows what you need before you ask him. Give us today what we need. That was the weirdest thing. I realized I forgot. I stopped looking for miracles. I started looking for management. And it was like, you know, God said, you know, John, you're in sales. You're not in management. <laughs> Leave that up to me. You just get out there in the sales. And then it says, uh, forgive us. Our debts, our sins, our trespasses, and, and by the way, depending on your background, you know, if you're Episcopal, it's trespasses. If you're Baptist, it's sins. And if you're Presbyterian, then it's uh, debts. Uh, it's that way. Each gospel has a different one. One gospel has debts, one has trespasses, and one has sins. So you're all right, okay? It's okay. But, but basically saying, you know, when we're talking to God, accept forgiveness. Receive it. With the, with the condition, this is the only conditional one, that has the accountability of accept the forgiveness to the extent that you offer it. Oh, I hate that. Right there. You know, that string's attached. Because what it's, what's it saying? I want to pray it this way. Forgive me, Lord. I want to pray it this way. Forgive us our sins whether or not we're gracious to the people around us. That's unconditional love, right? That's what I want. I just don't want to extend that. And so he goes, no, no, no. To the extent that you're willing to forgive, then experience it yourself. And then, it says, ask for protection from the evil one. What's that translation there? Protect us from the evil one. It's acknowledging that actually there is personal evil in this world. And it is personal. And, uh, and, and we need the Lord to protect us from this. He said, when you pray, do that. Do this. Acknowledge the relationship. Invite God's rule into your whole life. Let him take care of you today. Accept forgiveness and give it to the same amount. And, and, be, and ask for protection from evil. That's the prayer. And when, and when this happens, that's when we're communing with God, right? Not showy, not big work, just that's <coughs> real. And, uh, and Jesus said, look, I stand at the door and I'm knocking. If anybody hears my voice and opens the door, I'll come in and sup with them. I'll come in and commune with them. We'll share together. If anybody hears my voice and opens that door, 